Carousel de Louvre. I'm here for the annual Arm Sotheby's Paris sale, and there's some amazing stuff. Let's go have a look. Wow, look at this rolling sculpture underneath the Louvre with the ruins in the background. What a fantastic display from Arm Sotheby's. Front and center, this 1966 Ferrari 275 GTB 6C alloy. So this is one of only 75 cars to feature all aluminum bodywork, but it's distinguished even furthermore because it has a set of six downdraft Weber carburetors, bringing this car very close to competition specification, really paying homage to the 250 GTO. What a great car. Now this one was originally delivered in eggshell blue with a blue interior and how wonderful would it be to see this car restored back to its original combo here in paris with its matching numbers 3.3 liter v12 engine it sold for 3.211 million euros and that's a good price for a top blue chip collectible and one of the most liquid of all the ferraris Next, we move on to the highlight Ferrari, this 1960 short wheelbase Berlinetta competition, chassis number 1773 GT. So this car was first delivered to the North American racing team in full competition specification, which included an uprated TIPA 168B engine, lightweight aluminum bodywork, one of only 45, and a roll bar to go racing. And that's exactly what Luigi Cinetti did. Him and his wealthy clients, Georgia Rents and Bill Kimberly, took this car to its debut race at the 1960 12 Hours of Sebring. It placed seventh overall, a tremendous achievement, and fifth in class. Now, afterward, the car was continually raced, I think in about 20 races throughout North America. Then it was vintage raced, and that's how I saw it last, kind of in its vintage race specification. But since then, it's had a million dollar restoration by Wayne Obrey's Motion Products and Tony Auto, also in Marinello. They took that car that was essentially modified for modern racing and transformed it back into its appearance as raced at the 1960 12 Hours of Sebring's. Afterward, it was certified by the factory, having its original matching numbers, chassis, engine, rear axle, and outward aluminum body, being one of only 45 aluminum cars built in 1960 with fantastic racing history. It sold for 10 million euros, an astronomical price that was the top sale of Paris Car Week. And it really puts this car on a level more than just transportation. It really is high-end rolling sculpture. And the final Ferrari we'll look at from this room is this 1956 Ferrari 250 GT Coupe prototype by Pininfarina. This is the fourth of nine prototypes that was really first seen at the 1956 Geneva Motor Show, which really fused together the new Colombo 3.0 liter engine, the four-speed gearbox with Porsche Synchromesh gears, and this wonderful body style that was later realized for production by Buono and Elena. And as such, the, these first nine Pininfarina prototypes, they all have unique details if you look at the chrome work and everything like the grill and the kick up on the rear fenders. They all have unique individual touches. Now this car lives somewhat of a hard life. It experienced a fatal crash. A lot of 250 GT Lusso parts were put into it. So I think for that reason, it kind of held the price back a bit. It sold in Paris for 916,000 euros, which is still a lot, but that's $600,000 less than the unrestored and far more original 0469 GT I saw in Monterey. And this really shows that big money chases original cars. They're worth far more when they have all their constituent components and there's no stories. Let's go into one of the main rooms now. And there's a lot of people here today because this is open to the general public, which is really kind of arms to the bees to let everybody really get a good look at everything on offer. But what I really love right now is this 1930 Avion Voisin Clarier C25. It just has this French art deco look, eccentric details. And it's the kind of thing I love to see when I travel. 
a car that hasn't left the country. I think this is going to be a very expensive car too. It was recently completely restored. It has an absolutely wonderful kind of fastback design. And as we go in here, we can see such wonderful little details. Like the accent running along the bottom of the car. It kind of has this neat bevel to it. it has piano hinged doors. Go up here, you can see the triple wipers that are kind of go right through the windscreen. The gentleman's polishing up the Avion Voisin motif. And these big strut bars that hold the fenders, that's really iconic of Avion Voisin. What a neat car. Estimated 600 to 800,000 euros. So RM Sotheby's have a lot of modern supercars here today. And here we are looking at a Ferrari MC12 Corsa through all these people from 2007. So this is a track day toy that had a lot more horsepower than the FIA GT car, which had restrictors in it. So it kept all of the various different manufacturers competitive. Here in bright orange, it just looks so striking. I think they only made 20 of these, that's a guess. For the top Maserati clients. And it is really based off of the same Enzo Ferrari platform, but with a completely different body style. Wow, look at that. So striking. Next, we have some sort of beach car. I don't really know a lot about this. It looks very original. So what are we looking at? I'm not sure, look at this. No chrome around the top. So it's a Fiat 500 Boano beach car, wow. <laughs> oh, excuse, excuse. Very rare. Wooden bumpers. Very cool. Alancia Delta, Integrale Evolution 2. Very collectible car now. At 90 to 130,000 euros. Lamborghini, I think, what is this? This is called the Centenario. I think they only made 10 of these. This one today, they're looking for three to four million euros. Absolutely gorgeous, vibrant color of red. Wow, spectacular. From 2018. Let's get a look at the interior here. Oh, the back is so wild. Look at that diffuser. The rear is all diffuser. I really enjoy the stand too with the light around it. Well done, Arm Sotheby's. Okay, now on to more familiar territory. We have a 1961 outside bonnet latch E-Type that was completely restored from a barn find by CMC Motor Cars. So a very well done restoration. Now I poured over this car with my friend Michael Lemke. I'll put a link in the description below. We did a video going all through this car and talking about really what the work was and what it takes these days to get a car to this level. I think it's close to like car number 250. Right hand, left hand drive outside bonnet latch roadster. Okay, where do we go from here? We have a really nice McLaren, a LaFerrari in white. I guess I should be saying Bianca. Well, pretty radical lines on these modern supercars. Moving right along. <clears throat> so yeah, a whole real modern supercar collection here. Porsche 918 in black. BMW M1. 
kind of the most collectible of all the BMWs. In a very, very dark blue purple tone that probably doesn't come through on the phone that much. You see the straight six in here. And, and even then it's difficult, even on a lift. I mean, uh, because... Yeah. What a yeah. wild BMW. Uh, Developed in conjunction with Lamborghini. Porsche 962. Wow. Look at the wing on that. Holy smokes. What are you looking at? 1991 Porsche 962. 1.2 to 1 1.5 million euros. So it raced at Le Mans all over the world. Then, oh, look at this. I love my barn finds. So we have a Maserati Mistral from 1970. A 4.0 liter. Still with the dust all over it. Looking very complete. Holy. Hatch on the back there. Beautiful kind of copper color. Moving right along, some sort of Alfa Romeo. And a Bugatti Chiron. So the 1,500 horsepower. Bugatti flagship and this one was sent back to Bugatti and it got this striking wrap chrome finished wrap one of three in the world for 2.7 to 3.5 million euros well look at the reflections on that wow and something absolutely and totally completely different is this Bugatti type 40 from 1926 It's a tiny little thing. Love that steering wheel. Okay, I'm kind of confused. I made it all the way to Paris and I'm looking at a Jeep Wagoneer. Holy. Most of these cars totally rusted away where I live, these Jeep Wagoneers. I don't think I've ever seen one this early. Is this a collectible car? I can't believe we're going from all these modern supercars to a Jeep Wagoneer today, but Arm Sotheby's, they are definitely willing to take on uh, a lot of different type of commissions. And we'll finish up with this Mercedes CLK DTM, very limited edition supercar based off of the small C-series platform. And for this, they're looking for almost 400,000 euros. So a very expensive Mercedes. If I keep pulling back here, we have a great combo with this Zagato Aston Martin a V12. Great set of cars here today with Arm Sotheby's. And the final car of this video is this 1989 Porsche 928 GT. And you ask, why are we featuring this 928 GT? Well, have a look. Look at those widened fender flares and that really custom skirt. These are option codes XB1 and XC2, which are exceedingly rare. But beyond that, as we go around and see the front end, this is the one of one slant nose 928 featuring pop-up headlights in the style of a Porsche 944. Now, this option was only possible due to the Sonderwish, or Special Wishes team, which typically applied custom appointments to 911s. So this goes to show that the department was willing to get creative with the new big GT Porsche. Of course, the 928 is Porsche's first V8 sports car and notable for having a front engine, rear wheel drive layout. It was an expensive upmarket car meant to replace the 911, which it really never did. They produced around 60,000 totally, and this example has to be one of the very best in the world. Recorded just over 11,500 kilometers from new, 
and with 35 years of continuous and documented ownership, this car failed to sell in Paris, but was offered post-sale for 200,000 euros. Okay, everybody, that does it for my review of RM Sotheby's here in Paris. I was just so blown away by the cars, like that Voisin that's never left the country. That's why I've come all this way. And beautiful Ferraris like this, that wonderful 250 Competizione Ferrari. What a treat. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.